Hey everyone, I wanted to make a quick video explaining all the boss modifiers that I've come across in Remnant 2. I figured this could be helpful since there really isn't a way of knowing what you're up against other than trial and error in the game and figuring it out yourself. So without wasting too much of your time, let's get right into it. So throughout your adventures in Remnant 2, bosses and aberrations can randomly roll modifiers that will give them an upper edge within your encounter. However, each of these modifiers can actually be countered pretty easily. If the boss has empathy, do not use your relic. Every time you use your relic, the boss will also heal. However, consumables, mods, and abilities that can heal you will not affect the boss in any way. So if you have a meta class unlocked, you can use your main ability to heal yourself, but just to be safe, you can head to Dr. Nora and grab some bandages and a few blood roots, and you can rely on the free healing shot to get some quick heals in. If your boss has Hardy over their name, bring some heavy artillery because it's going to be a long fight. Hardy gives your boss an increased health pool as well as a higher defense. Ideally, this is somewhat easily countered by applying any weak spot damage, crit chance, or crit damage rings. And if you need even more firepower, I recommend using the Engineer's Prime perk with the Vulcan for maximum shots on target. It's worth noting that any build that can apply status effects will also help a ton here. However, sometimes bosses can have dual modifiers, and usually when I get hardy, I also get elemental resist. This one should be pretty self-explanatory, but all status effects are nullified when attacking the boss. Pure raw damage output is the only true damage dealer here. It's worth using the handler or the summoner here if you need someone to tank the shots for you, otherwise the engineer's minigun is again very good for maintaining shots on target. Drain is an interesting one, I've only seen a couple times thankfully, but this allows the boss to heal themselves by leeching health from you directly through attacks. So I hope you're getting better at dodging, otherwise good luck. Spiteful is a scary modifier that tends to get the better of me whenever I feel like I can get a few more shots into the boss. It gives the boss more damage as they lose more health. Best not to be greedy and place your last shots when you have the best opportunity. Regenerator just happens to be another way a boss can get health back and honestly it's my least favorite of all the healing ones. Regenerator will feel a lot like Hardy because the boss will just regen health every second of the fight. I got this once while fighting the blue little space crab and it was a nightmare having to kill his space goat just to whittle his health down to tiny two bars. I'd recommend any weapons that will do damage over time to mitigate the downtime that you might have between reloads or evasions of the boss themselves. Speaking of really bad modifiers, Enchanter can be pretty bad if you run out of room in your boss arena. Enchanter will allow the boss to use rod explosions and effects on you throughout the entire encounter. Giving you literally nowhere to breathe, it's best to try to evade and create a little distance between you and your teammates with this one. If you're nervous about getting hit with too much rot, make sure you actually bring some oil skin bomb for resistance and to help cure it. Unstoppable isn't the worst modifier on the list, just don't expect the boss to ever let up. Unstoppable will make the boss completely immune to any staggering effect no matter the damage output. Again though, damage over time and evasive actions when battling any bosses with this one will surely help. Similar to Enchanter, Bursting causes fiery explosions to occur around your character if they stay still for too long. This is where rotation around the boss is key, so keep moving and deal as much damage as you can. Waller is an annoying modifier to go against, however it's very easily beatable with a team. All it's really going to do is create a moment for the boss to trap you within a wall, blocking your view and causing you to lose a bit of control within the fight. This is really just meant to catch you off guard as much as possible. Another similar modifier to Waller is Displacer. However, instead of being placed adjacent to a wall where vision is obscured, Displacer literally shifts your placement within the fight randomly. This thankfully isn't as annoying as Waller because it just shifts you around and you can re-engage almost immediately. Now, Teleporter is very similar to Displacer, however, instead of you being randomly shifted, the boss is now the one who is freely moving around randomly. Again, not as annoying as Waller, but more so than Displacer. The boss can bring in some backup sometimes when they feel like it, and the minion's modifier can be really annoying when playing solo. But again, Engineer's Turret or Summoner's own minions can be a lot of help here. Personally though, I keep my pupper on minion alert because I know how easy the bleed tick will just kill targets around me. I actually have yet to encounter Swarm, but from what I've seen, it's very similar to minions, however the enemies are just purely rats. It still seems pretty annoying because of the amount of enemies that are able to keep you at bay whilst fighting the boss, but this also seems easily countered by the engineer's impact cannon, and just focusing the boss while being near it so the rats can't affect you. Shocking will keep you on your toes as the boss will be able to send lightning attacks directly at you. Dodging is your only real counter to this. Vortex is the worst side modifier in my opinion, it creates a constant gravitational pull to the boss, making you uncomfortably close to them, and it puts you at risk when you inevitably are trying to dodge away. If you create distance, you can work down their health right before they pull you in closer, and the support dog is actually a great way of making sure this can happen, as he can take the aggro for you and be your tank while you focus on the damage. Root grab is an interesting one, I've only ever encountered it once and it really wasn't that bad, but in a smaller arena it can be difficult. 
What the boss will do is occasionally summon traps around you, and if you step in it, the root will hold you in place vulnerable to the boss's attacks. This can easily be countered by just watching your step. The traps will fade away after some time, and they're also escapable, so it doesn't really threaten you too much. My only recommend here is to just not sit in a corner, mostly so you can move out of the way and focus fire the boss. Again, similar to root grab, slow puddles will place traps along the ground that will slow you down and suppress you over time. Fairly easy to get around them, and in my opinion it doesn't really threaten the player too much, do the same thing I said previously. However, thick skin is a brutal one, mostly because it will play to your patience with a boss. This makes a boss not only a tougher opponent, but it will also absorb damage. Weak spots don't do nearly as much damage as they normally do, and you'll notice that your damage will just be stagnant the entire fight. My best advice here is to bring a team in so less time is wasted. Or, you could bring your strongest damaging weapons to focus pure DPS. If your boss has Vicious under their name, prepare for a beating. All attack damage the boss outputs will be increased exponentially. This again can be easily countered by dodging or relying on your teammates, summons, or your pup to get some cheap shots in. Again, not a bad modifier, but not a great one either. And lastly, there's the Skullbreaker modifier. Again, I haven't seen too many bosses with this modifier, thankfully, but if your boss happens to have this one, expect each attack to have an increased staggering effect on you. Meaning, escaping out of an initial hit might be much harder if they land an attack, because it will basically stunlock you. I recommend grabbing a few friendly teammates to help assist you, because passing the aggro will give you ample time to heal and get out of the way. Otherwise, dodge often and spray and pray. And there it is, that's all the boss modifiers that you might encounter throughout your playthrough in Remnant 2, and I hope I was able to help anyone out that was confused on what each one actually does. I hope you're better prepared for your next encounter, and I wish you the best of luck. My name is Zen, and I'll see you in the next one.